it's an optimistic world. Unfortunately, it's a competitive and comparative world where I was competing for, negotiating for everything that I had. And I was blessed to utilize the wisdom and hard work in order to get to where I wanted to be financially, which helped to dissipate the feeling of being a victim. Since 1981, Justin has been producing world-class Bordeaux-style wines from Paso Robles on California's Central Coast. As the pioneer of Paso, Justin wines are what put Paso Robles on the winemaking map. The Justin team believes that wine should be exceptional from every angle, which is why their team uses boutique winemaking practices like hand harvesting and hand sorting. With a rich history of accolades, Justin produces exceptional wines and is proud to be America's number one luxury Cabernet. Whether you're the first time wine drinker or a wine aficionado, Justin has a wine for every celebration and occasion. Visit justinwine.com and enter promo code PLAYBOOK20 for 20% off your order. Justin offers the perfect holiday gifts for clients, colleagues, friends, or family. Be sure to check them out at justinwine.com to receive 20% off your order for a limited time and use the promo code PLAYBOOK20. Welcome back to Not Basic Bond Podcast. Thank you for having me. It's a great opportunity to share with the community what's going on and hopefully helping them to live in abundance. And you do such a wonderful job. I had to come back. Thank you so much. And you have such an incredible background and you're extremely successful. So we definitely would love to know more about you and definitely hear your advice. So let's just dive in. And what were some of the biggest challenges you faced in your early career and how did you overcome them? So the number one thing that I faced was scarcity. I grew up with a single mom, six kids, five boys and a girl. And when you have a scarce mindset, you live in a world as a victim. There's not enough of anything for anyone. And so for me, the most difficult thing was overcoming financial scarcity because I had love and a, a great family education, but I felt less than, and I felt comparative and I felt like a victim because I could not have what other people could have. I was had less opportunities for school, for camp, for all types of different athletic uh, pursuits. And so for me, the biggest challenge I had was getting out of the mindset that I wasn't enough, that I was separate from, and I was a victim and things happened to me. And how do you actually come out of the victim mindset when someone has it? And also you do talk a lot of minds, a lot, you do talk a lot about mindset in your um, videos and your content as well. And what advice would you give someone how to get out of the scarcity mindset? Well, you know, one of the things, you know, one of our greatest fears is uh, Napoleon Hill states is the fear of poverty. Then the fear of death and then the fear of other people's opinion. And they three go hand in hand. And so as we work through the fear of poverty, the fear of death, and the fear of other people's opinion, we can create less resistance to financial abundance, emotional abundance, relationship abundance, the worthiness issues that fall upon those that live in scarcity as well. Um, and so the first step was to seek wisdom in order to effectuate stepping from a world of not enough, where you're a victim, where things happen to you. And I stepped into a world of for me, it's an optimistic world. Unfortunately, it's a competitive and comparative world where I was competing for, negotiating for everything that I had. And I was blessed to utilize the wisdom and hard work in order to get to where I wanted to be financially, which helped to dissipate the feeling of being a victim that I now felt like things were happening for me. I was much more optimistic. Uh, unfortunately, you can fall into the realm as I did in my 20s and 30s, that although I thought I was living in abundance, I thought I had uh, elevated my awareness and not lived in scarcity. I actually still lived in scarcity because of the comparative nature of scarcity. Uh, I was looking for approval, validation. I was seeking my identification through how much money I made. I actually would be happy 
every time my bank account went up as little as $100. And I would be depressed if it went down $100, even though I was worth over $100 million. And so getting out of the world of for me, where uh, giving and receiving is a negotiation or a trade, where you end up in a comparative fear of other people's opinion, buying things you don't need to impress people you don't like, was the next stage of enlightenment or abundance. And I had to move on from there. And the only way I could learn that lesson was to lose everything. So in 2008, I went bankrupt and lost over a hundred million dollars. And so my basement had a basement, which forced me as pain indicated that I needed a different purpose and perspective in order to effectuate where I am today, living in the world of abundance of a world of more than enough. Wow, I love that. And also, I like how you pointed out that also our self-esteem should not depend on money or somebody else's opinion or any of that. And it's definitely important to remember that. <laughs> and um, what, in your opinion, what are the most crucial skills for entrepreneurs to have them today? Yeah, so the number one skill that entrepreneurs should have today as the ability to ask for help. Uh, as an entrepreneur, the most expensive tax you're gonna pay in a failing or successful business is something that I call the dummy tax. And there's only one way to avoid the dummy tax. It's not moving to Nevada or Florida uh, or Texas. It's actually asking for help. The fastest way to get to where you wanna be or better is to find someone who sits in the situation you wanna be or better and ask them for help also allowing you to help other people get to where they want to be or better. And so understanding the who is the best piece of advice that I give to entrepreneurs. I also encourage them to understand that mistakes will never make you a failure. The lack of commitment, consistent commitment is what makes failures. Wow. I love that. So true because so many people are afraid of failures and but they forget that when we fail, we actually grow because we learn. I mean, hopefully some people learn. <laughs> yeah, that was my goal. How do you approach failure and how do you actually approach and get out of setbacks? Yeah. So for me, I use four different values in order to have a relationship with learning. And when you have a relationship with learning with these four values, you have a relationship with failure, mistakes, setbacks, voids, shortages, obstacles that occur every day and are omnipresent uh, in our lives. And so for me, number one is through gratitude to find the light, the love, and the lessons in those failures, mistakes, and setbacks. So it's gratitude that allows us to have a perspective to find the light, the love, and the lessons and the mistakes, failures, setbacks, voids, shortages, and obstacles. The second value that helps to facilitate a greater relationship is forgiveness. So many people beat themselves up when they make mistakes. They don't find not only the light, the love, and the lessons in the shortage voids and obstacles, but then they exacerbate or accelerate the mistakes by feeling bad about themselves, inferior. Uh, they live in more fear and they have more resistance in their lives. And so forgiveness brings ease when they're able and capable of forgiving themselves, which then you can only give what you have. And if you've given yourself forgiveness, then it's quite easy to give others forgiveness and live at ease in the flow, in the infinite flow, the abundant flow of everything, more than enough of everything for everyone. And then the third value is to take accountability. Uh, so many of us are not learning from those mistakes, like you suggested earlier. And in order to learn from our mistakes, to have a relationship with failure, not only must you have the perspective of gratitude and the ease created by forgiveness, but you can actually take control by being accountable, by learning the lesson, by asking yourself, what did I do to be responsible for this? What did I do to attract this to myself? What did I do to participate in this perception? And most importantly, as stated, what did I learn from it? 
Now I'm creating progress, good behavior from the mistakes, failures, and setbacks, not punishment or bad behavior or resistant behavior that creates more voids, shortages, and obstacles between me and where I want to be or better. And then finally, the value and capability of effective communication. Not only must we effectively communicate through gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability with all the people, places, and circumstances around us, but most importantly, it's not only the wisdom that we learn from those lessons of the mistakes, but it's the faith of effectively communicating with something bigger than us, an omniscient, all-knowing, all-powerful source that loves us and protects us and promotes us more than our mom. And so through effective communication comes inspiration. And as we live more inspired in spirit with the intuition and intelligence and the inspiration that allows us to accelerate, to aggregate more support and positivity, to exponentially create greater results in our lives, we now move from the world of not enough where we're punished from the world of just enough, buying things we don't need to impress people we don't like, identifying with only our bank accounts as a sole source of happiness. But now we can give more, be given more, receive more, and ask for more than more in the world of infinite, of more than enough of everything for everyone. And we do that through gratitude, empathy, accountability, and effective communication. Wow, I love that. And it's definitely great points. And I, I love how you mentioned like all these four points. Incredible. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Therapy is a great tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them. Because sometimes the scariest thing is not facing our fears in the first place and holding ourselves back. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash playbook today to get a 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash playbook. Imagine starting a small business, your first customer, first hire, first real paycheck. But everything isn't just exciting, it's scary. That's where JustWorks come in the all-in-one platform that supports small business growth, access seamless tools that help with benefits, payroll, HR, and compliance with transparent pricing. It's time to make payroll painless, run payroll in 90 seconds or less, and automate payments so you can set it and forget it. Did you know in 2023 alone, they processed over 25.6 billion entrusted payroll customers, don't worry about the paperwork piling up either. They take care of payroll tax documents and reporting to help you stay compliant. Visit justworks.com slash podcast to join the thousands of small businesses that trust JustWorks to take care of payroll, benefits, compliance, and more. That's justworks.com slash podcast. What advice would you give aspiring entrepreneurs who are just starting out? Yeah, beyond asking for help, uh, I would teach them the five daily practices. So I would tell them to learn to know what they want each day according to the circumstances of the day, learn the lessons from the past, and create a divine pursuit of a destination where they want to be or better. Then ask for help, know your who, who you can help and who can help you. And then really be productive, accessible, and gracious with your time. Make sure that you know your non-negotiables and negotiables. Make sure you have planned and unplanned. Make sure you sleep and separate time by what you're paid for and you're not paid for. If you know the what, the who, and the how, you then can prioritize your now, knowing that 100% of the things you do now 
get done. In fact, 100% of the things you do next get done. So priority and prioritization now become the antidote to what stops most entrepreneurs, feeling overwhelmed or procrastinating. It is impossible if you know what's important to you and you prioritize what's important to you. It is impossible. It is the antidote to feeling overwhelmed or procrastinating. And one of the blessings that happens when we learn to know our what, our who, our how, and our now and the next, is instead of searching for what we don't have, what we don't want, what's missing, or what other people want for us, we apply our why to what we want, what we have, what we think we should have, and what we desire. So our direction becomes divine, our detours become divine, and the timing of what we want or better becomes divine as well. We live in an infinite loop of more than enough. We get to where we want to be or better faster and are able and more capable of helping more people along the way. Wow, knowing your why is important. I, I love how you mentioned all these points. And also some people get so afraid to start something that they become major procrastinators and then it doesn't even get you anywhere. And the biggest mistake most of the entrepreneurs do. They keep themselves busy, but not productive. And after that- uh, A lot like, of people get so busy, uh, so busy they forget to make money. <laughs> yeah, so true. And they have all these projects going on and what projects are actually paying you. So <laughs> I like how you said prioritize things too. How do you approach networking and what tips do you have for building meaningful networking relationships? Well, anything that you want to build or progress in, you need to practice. And so for me, I practice every day building the network of people, the community of people that want to help each other and know people that can help each other. Because people that want to help each other and know people that want to help each other are people who buy from each other and sell for each other for life. And nothing makes you more successful in business than having a large community of people that buy from each other and sell for each other for life. And so I practice asking every day how I can be of service or value. And if you know anyone that can help me, in fact, my prayer in the morning is may God put in front of me at least 10 people that I can help but also at least 10 people that can help me. So whether it be in person, on the phone, via email, or media, traditional or social media, I'm building every day by asking how I could be of service or value, asking people would it help you if, and asking them, do you know anyone that can help me in person, on the phone, via email and media, traditional and social, exactly how we can share value how we can help one another and know people that can help each other so that we can build a lifetime community of people that are buying from each other and selling for each other for life. I love that advice. And also like some people are afraid to reach out to people because thinking of rejection or they will not be interested. But if you actually trying to build your network and try to build a huge community you should not be afraid to reach out because many people will not mind to actually connect with like-minded successful people as well what one piece of advice you wished you received earlier in your career <laughs> uh, i wish somebody would have told me to be more interested than interesting i was so busy trying to speak to people to inspire people to tell them what I think instead of learning. And so I wish I would have been more interested than interesting and utilized my two ears more than my one mouth. As a successful entrepreneur, what uh, key principles drive your decision-making? So for me, what drives my decision-making is knowing one, my values, two, my daily practices, and three, my execution model each day according to those circumstances. And so what drives me in the context of those three things is the common denominator that drives all great successful people, no matter what industry, career, or job they're in. And that is I must have a desire 
to be what I must be. You see, the common denominator of all billionaires, millionaires, and entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, entertainers at the world-class level is that they all have a desire that they must be what they can be. I call them pods, people of determination. And it is this one core dependent variable that connects all greatness together and allows them to live in the extraordinary because of this purpose. And the purpose must be greater than the pain in order to continue to have the consistent commitment to pursue your potential or your truth or your best self. Wow, I love that. And you said the purpose has to be greater than pain. I mean, we do get, go through a lot of pain building a business and all the entrepreneurs go through so many challenges. And as far as um, where can our listeners find you, your social handles, all your information? Yeah, it's quite easy. I want to offer your entire community my book. I'll be happy to sign it, send it to you, pay for my book and shipping for anyone in your community or anything else I can do. If you email me, david at dmeltzer.com, uh, please put it in the notes. Just directly email me, david at dmelter.com. I'll be happy to sign, send, ship, pay for shipping and the book to everyone. And if you want to find me, I'm on every handle, including Google me at my name, David, D-A-V-I-D, Meltzer, M-E-L-T-Z-E-R, like seltzer with an M, David Meltzer. I appreciate the opportunity to come back and share with the community of not basic blonde and what a great podcast. Thank you for having me.